Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar. My name is Simon Smith and I'm Head of Research here at FX Pro. Last week I covered the basics of FX and you can find a recording of that webinar on our YouTube page and I'll show you how to find that later. This week I'm going to cover the basics of FX trading. I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to tell you absolutely nothing about how you make a decision to buy or sell a currency because there's numerous books that have been written on that and certainly can't do it justice within the space of 30 minutes. Instead I'm going to focus on the structure of a suggested approach to trading and it's designed to help you think ahead and help you avoid some of the basic and common mistakes that novice traders make. Before I do that I just need to make you aware of the disclaimer this essentially to paraphrase says that this should be considered a marketing communication and not be considered investment advice and also just as a risk warning lets you know that CFDs are leveraged products and aren't suitable for all investors and if necessary you should take appropriate advice. It's good if you can get involved. The webinar software you will find at the top a little uh, drop down um, Q&A panel. So during the webinar if you can keep your questions related to the content that I've presented so far that would be great so we can maintain the flow and keep things on topic and I'll address them as I can as we go along the way. All questions will uh, be posted anonymously, they're only, only seen by me. This webinar will be recorded, and but I won't refer to anyone by name, and I will again answer questions anonymously. So this webinar, this webinar I'm going to sort of give a quick summary of what I covered last week, um, and show you how to work out a pip value of an example trade, sort of following on from um, what we did last week. Just sort of one of the important things is sort of preparing and so sort of knowing um, what you're risking before you trade. Risk and money management is where nearly all traders fail in my view. It's not the question of whether you're, you know, you can forecast the future because most people can't. Um, it's a question of proper risk and money management. And it's just um, to appreciate the importance of having a trading plan in place, so not just sort of jumping in with both feet, but putting out a plan and understanding your plan and revising it and constantly reviewing it. And also just touching on the psychology of um, trading, which is a key, another key area where a lot of people come unstuck in the early days. I'll just give you some pointers on the way ahead from here because clearly I can't cover everything again in, th in the space of 30 minutes so it's just um, going to outline these areas and where you can um, follow up. So last week we went right to the basics and um, we covered what you, what essentially what Forex is. Um, I'm going to quickly show you where you can find that webinar. If you go onto YouTube, you will find a channel called FX Pro Marketing. So if you search that within YouTube, you'll find it. Within there, um, you will find some playlists, which always appear differently. There's an introduction to FX. That's on a webinar playlist, and you can watch that webinar there, should you so wish. Can look at uh, we looked at the conventions in quoting currencies. So you know most of the time the first two letters of the code is U.S. Um, it stands for the country. The last one D stands for dollar. The actual currency. There are exceptions. E.U.R. and com covering the fact that the base currency is the first one quoted. We looked at why forex has grown rapidly in recent years, even when other asset classes were doing not so well during the financial crisis. As always, there's lots of terminology, so we covered some of the basics within that. We looked at lots, leverage, pips and spreads, etc. So that was also covered in last week's. And it touched on the dynamics and, of course, why Forex is different compared to stocks. And look at some of the correlations and simple ways of, of analysing that and why Forex can complement um, other asset classes in a wider investment strategy. So this is some of the sort of um, terms we will we were covering last week. I did an example last week, a very, very simple example. So we'll be, I think I've revised this one just to sort of make the numbers work out a bit better. So we're doing an example of buying one lot at one to two two um two hundred leverage. 
and to do that with our um, we need a 500 margin I think we're doing this with a um, a larger account than last week as well so we, the important thing is to calculate the pip value we talked about pips last week and a pip in euro dollar is the this fourth decimal place it's for most currencies one pip is the fourth decimal place the main exception on the majors being dollar yen which is quoted normally to um, the two decimal places um, in the convention so we need to know at the beginning um, what we what's um, the value of each pip is in that trade So we can calculate it in a simple formula, and there, there are um, think apps you can get, tools you can get online, you can do it um, within, there's an MT4 plugin as well, which um, does the same thing, just to calculate um, that, that notional value, the, the value of one single pip. So we're doing it on euro dollar. So just to run through them, those num numbers, the one pip is, is equivalent to 0 0.0001. We divide that by the exchange rate we have here and times by the notional amount because we're doing one lot which gets some seven euros point six eight so a 10 pip move up would be 76.82 um, euros in this example so that's a simple you wouldn't have to sort of get your calculator out every time as I said there are depending on you know there are, if you, there are tools within our website if you just put search FX Pro tools again as I mentioned you can get um, similar within um, MT4 C Trader will calculate it automatically um, once the trade is open but you can again use those tools to work out your risk before you um, jump in as well so just making that point again so you have to convert to the account currency if we've done this on euros because euros is the base currency but say I was trading in a sterling based account then we just need to convert that to our base currency for our account which is where the profit and loss etc will be done so if, if the, your account is not based in the base currency you would need to do that last conversion and I do this at the beginning because of the importance of um, risk and money management to trading and it's a point I make um, in different ways and several ways through the webinar and probably focus on next week's or Thursday's webinar as well when I look at the psychology, psychology of trading because the simple thing you find in looking at you know, analyzing traders, analyzing trading statistics etc is that successful traders will focus on what they could lose before they trade so that's a real focus you can get excited about the potential gains but those success traders that survive invariably they're focusing on what they're risking um, as a sort of primary motivation so in our, our example so when I did this webinar last it's probably gone down a bit now the average daily range over euro dollar for the past six weeks was um, just 80 pips um, so the pip you could then calculate the pip value of that range so again this is depending this is a simple way of doing it when again it depends on your trading horizon whether it's right if you were looking to hold the trade longer than a day then perhaps you'd want to again it's just a suggestion look, have a bigger risk value on this trade so again the pip value of this range would be 80 times our one pip value so 614 euros and I'm focusing on this for the the points making here so you're you're focusing on perhaps where you want to put your stop loss whether you wanted to um, how, where you want to put that stop loss again something I'm going to focus on a bit later but why am I focusing on this at the beginning it's because again like I said risk is it's poor risk and money management which is the undoing of um, the majority of traders I'd say in the early days and I make this uh, um, point about the, the the importance of capital preservation in trading you know, because you've set this aside as risk capital it would always refer to that all books as you know you, when you're trading in sort of leveraged products you have to be prepared um, you see it as risk capital money you're prepared to and uh, um, able to lose for that reason you've got to do your best to preserve it ie not lose it and you consider just a thousand of trading capital so if you lose 80 so you go down to 1,000 minus 80, you go down to 920 of trading capital. But you have to then, if you want to make back what you've lost, you have to then make a 9% gain. So your 8% fall 
because you're then now at a lower base of trading capital, you may need to make 9% to regain that. So if you lose um, 200, so 1,000 minus 200, you lose, you're down to 800 of trading capital, so you're down 20%. You then move to make up 25%. Again, if, you make, if you're here, then um, I think you're pretty much doomed. So if you do end up in this situation, it's pretty much, I would say, certain that you will not make that money back. You know, the mistakes you've made to get you down here are never going to allow you to suddenly you never I could never imagine what would then turn this trader around to suddenly be able to double double their money to even get back where they were. So you, you never want to be in this position where you've um, lost half your trading capital, which is the importance of what I was saying at the beginning. So working out what you're prepared to risk, where you want to put your stop loss, what that is is, is as a proportion of your total trading capital. So if you, your stop loss is um, 25 percent let's say or 20 percent of your trading capital that's why people get whacked or wiped out you're you're risking too much of uh, your risk capital on one trade and you only need two or th say you are risking 25 percent you only need two losing trades to pretty much get you from a position from which you will invariably be unable to recover This is, you know, another way of saying the same thing. So if you, you know, take care of the losses, focus on the losses, really, you know, rationalise how much you're prepared to lose, then, you know, the profits look after themselves. And again, that that's what this chart illustrates that same point in a way that, you know, taking care of that risk capital um, is a way of ensuring that the, or, or, or making it more likely that the, the, the profits work out. That's why I said just to underline the point, and I underline these points, and I repeat myself not for the fear of um, um, being boring, because it's so important that you work out the pit value of your intended trade. So how much you and then work out how much equity you are willing to risk. The bigger, the, you know, if you risk more, the you know, as I said, the bigger the climb out of the hole. Um, if you start losing your trading capital. So again, in our example, when we had a yeah, average true rate or trade, you know, a, a stop loss away 80 basis points or 80 um, pips away from our current level on euro dollar. He was risking um, just over 600 euros of our trading capital. So you could say on a 10,000 account that was just un under 6% or just over 6%. slightly different numbers but saying the same thing again so this is our risk of potential loss so in our, ours we think we set it at 80 so this is a um, 100 pip range here so one big figure range on euro dollar so this is your your risk this is what you're risking and, and again this is why I'm making the point work this out before you trade align it with key levels in the market so maybe this had proven to be um, again these are made up numbers but proven to be a good level there was maybe good uh, good support for the market just above that 130 level so you maybe you set it at 130 knowing that if you've gone through this support just above 130 then would like to be moving lower so that's where you put your um, stop loss that position away then you'd work out that risk again using your pip value and from there you work out what potential so what do you what do you what do you want to potentially win from this trade and you need to align this with the levels of the market. Maybe this is a key level in terms of um, resistance as well. So, again, this is all what you should be doing before you trade, and and regardless and immaterial of whether it's you know the the reasons for doing the trade. So it's going back to the previous example then. So we set the stop loss at the average range. Again, there are other ways of doing this if you're trading on a longer. Um, time frame you'd want to set a larger and probably want to lower the risk as well on that in terms of the amount so we, as I mentioned verbally we're, we're risking six percent of our ten thousand balance now again you need to as a you know when you're trading work out well is, is that is that fair some people say less than that some people say you should never risk two percent some people might put five percent as a barrier but you know you need to put this in context you could reduce it, of course, by a number of ways. You could put a tighter stop, say, where maybe you put your 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 stop loss, um, your risk, as we put in that previous chart, lower, but 
it's more likely to be triggered. What often happens with traders is you, know, you move towards that stop loss, it's triggered, and then you you happily or frustratingly watch the market then move in the opposite direction, i.e. in the direction you were first envisaging. So that's you know, what often happens when people set stop losses too tight, you see it move and then actually see your trade come good, but actually you've been then stopped out. Of course, you could increase the amount of your risk capital. But the other way is just doing a smaller trade side or you know, using less leverage. So all of those are ways you could you could manage this or um, once you'd calculated these, think, well, that, that's too much, you know, and to be honest, um, you have to think that, you know, the fact that losing trades are a fact of life and, you know, if anyone tells you otherwise, um, they're clearly lying. So you need to be able to sort of have a strategy that would um, potentially... Um, you cope with three to four losing consecutive losing trades, um, but not you know in this case it would leads leads maybe a sort of twenty five percent reduction in your account balance. You know you can probably cope with that. But if this was risking, as I said, ten twenty twenty five percent, then clearly you know, there's a great a great risk that you are wiped out before you know it. So again, I'm underlying the point of thinking about all these things and the risk of money management, the amount you're risking before you start trading. So trade planning, again, I'll probably touch on this a bit more on Thursday when I look at the psychology of trading. So risk and money, again, making the point, risk and money management is all a part of trade planning. It's sort of counterintuitive way because perhaps you want to be focused on what you could gain. And that's what's perhaps motivating you, you know, motivating you to train. But you should look at more what you could potentially lose. And it's boring and I think some why some not necessarily in the nature of you know a risk loving trader um to look at what you could potentially lose, but that is the site the mindset you have to get into and again the, most of the evidence suggests and uh, if you look around look at data et cetera this is one of the sort of biggest reasons why people do lose in f x trading it, it's not planning ahead in terms of the risk and planning on risk and and looking at trade size the the pit values and all that thing which is and seeing their capital eroded very quickly is um why a lot of people fail, fall at the beginning, which is why I'm not talking to you about how to sort of decide whether to buy euro or sell euros or whatever other currency pair, which is why I'm banging this home because it's the important um, element. And all this, as I said, even before the reasons for the trades have been considered, because you can have a you know 70% ratio of winning to losing trades, so 70% of your trades are uh, you know going in the right direction, and you can still lose money. You know, more likely is that you see people with you know less than fifty percent of ratio of winners to losers, but they will do well through good risk management. And um, a lot of the successful traders you know I've met um, you know in in the last few years, you know those that are doing well have tended to have quite a low risk raw risk um, or ratio of winners to losers. I you know quite often statistically they have more losing trades than winning trades, but actually on the losing trades they lose a small amount through ri proper risk management and on winning trades again make decent money because again through proper risk management and that may be you know, not through simple stop losses as I had in my example but it might be through you know other more sophisticated risk management techniques such as trailing stops etc that allow them to ensure that those gains are maintained. So you know, there's a lot of bullet points in this presentation. There'll be more pretty pictures next week, and there were in the previous week. But the point I'm I'm, I'm sort of you know, making these points because they're 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 so important. Because trade planning is important because it's you're articulating why you're trading, the reasons, the key levels, support and resistance. So a lot of um, this allows you to sort of identify your strengths and weaknesses. There might be patterns in there. You know, as absolutely as as I say having a plan and sort of articulating this plan, writing things down, going through your winning and losing trades. It might be patterns, it might be common themes, you know, maybe seventy five percent of your trades are being killed by data releases because you're running risk into, you know, high risk events, central bank meetings, non farm payrolls, and there's a very simple way of um you know, mitigating that in terms of um, you know hedging or closing the trades ahead of those. So, looking back, and we there's always a recency bias in traders. You always 
more generally in life one of the psychology we always sort of put more weight on things to happen recently you know so there could be a pattern emerging that unless you write you look at these things and analyze them you know you maybe just focus on the recent the recent things ignore ones in the past but actually looking at it in the whole might teach you a very valuable lesson but also you know it allows you to rationalize you both your profits and losses and sometimes you might be you know right you know it's quite often people just say oh, i told you you know the euro was going to go here but actually the reasoning can be um totally wrong and actually you can be you know right for the wrong reasons and i've seen that so often in markets and you know, they may just be lucky and if you are lucky um that can lead you know if you don't realize actually you were just lucky on that point rather than correct so that can then very quickly lead to overconfidence while well, i was right that time and and jumping again and actually then you know you lose you you've very quickly just reverse and lose what you made so again the rationalization can sort of think was i right well was i right if was i right for the right reasons or you know again was i just you know just lucky and you have to realize that and be aware of it and make sure it doesn't lead to overconfidence as i say just continuing that through the trading as well so in terms of setting stop losses and take profits within a trade platform and you can dynamically control these um, on both um, C Trader and MT4 platforms um, through trailing stops, etc. Let's say you know, and managing that with just made verbally that same point. So it's keeping that with going, not just sort of setting um, those orders. You know, take profit, stop loss in the market and or in your platform, and just um, running ahead with it. But also just finally watching out for risk events in terms of, um, like I mentioned before, things that could unsettle your trade or, you know, as I talked about, the average true range for euro dollar being 80 um, pips in the f a few slides ago. Now that could obviously change very drastically on, you know, uh, an ECB meeting day or the date of payrolls, etc. And just one slide on the psychology of trading, one slide because I'm something I'm going to talk more about on Thursday, but it's very important. It's, you need to sort of know and really sort of analyze your strengths and your your weaknesses your personality your skills because you don't want to be fighting yourself if, you know if you're not if you're trading in a way which does not suit your, your strengths your skills and your personality you'll sort of be fighting yourself in a way rather than concentrating on trading you know that's why we've been promoting algo trading and expert advisors one of the reasons being that they uh, they're a way of you know allowing to structure um the way you approach traders you know in, in terms of coming over overcoming that very common um psychological flaw where we tend to sort of run with losing trades because you know we're, we're convinced they're going to come right and you know taking gains quickly because we don't want to you know we want to sort of revel in our success and Algo trading is sort of is a way of putting that plan in a very structured way and allows you to overcome that. But also, you know, understanding it also you know allows you to sort of overcome the the wasted stress and energy of you know undertaking an approach which doesn't suit you. And as I said before, if you're doing that and you're sort of is draining you mentally and you know means you'll struggle to succeed. And these are just rough. I'll probably do more on this. And these are ones I did when I did the presentation last month. You know, sort of examples of trading styles. You know, if you're impatient, you like risk. You you know, you're more likely to be um, one that's um, happy doing short-term trading, you know, scalping, etc. You know, personally, that's that's not really the, the approach I take. You know, and I'm I'm a more and you know, I wouldn't want to trade that way because I'd find it you know not enjoyable and probably stressful but that's and again that's just a reflection of perhaps my approach and you know I'm a more analytical and reasoned person so you're taking longer time frames you're not always having to be in the market so that's sort of if you need to sort of really build up the reasons for trading then you're you know you, you're going to probably trade lower leverage and you know you you don't always have to have the thrill of having open positions on a daily basis and um, you know it's when I'm sort of playing around with demo accounts you know that's quite often the case but other times I feel very convinced about things and will you know put on trades etc others might you know be more sociable and, and want to actually learn from others and, and rank them on a peer you know on a peer basis we're very you know as as human beings we are very and as other psychological you know, surveys you see about you see what we 
we're very concerned about you know how we stack up with others and, and so, some people are more concerned than others which is my you know social trading might be more useful in terms of learning off others seeing or even just say well i'm better than them and forums and social media etc and some people you know, is a need that more than others let's say you know you might be a time poor you know investor so you, you think well this this is all very well and good, but you know I, I struggle to find the time to actually get involved. And why you know we've launched, recently launched Super Trader, and that's something you might. Well, you're sort of in. You're getting a sense of trading in FX markets, but you're you're more investing in other strategies and creating a portfolio of strategies, and that just might suit more people who are um, not geared or not wanting to sort of you know get involved in trading both feet and deal with deal with um, these issues, but still want to be involved in FX or interested in FX and that's something again we'll explore in webinars um, in December. So I've really just touched on the psychology side because I'm probably going to look at it more on, thir on Thursday afternoon's webinar. So in summary hopefully you can now you know work out the pit value of a trade again you, as I've mentioned there are lots of ways you can do that um, in a more automated basis and I've banged home the point to the maybe to the point of sounding a bit sort of um, overstating it but you know the importance of understanding what you're risking is absolutely everything and preserving that risk capital focusing on the losses before you trade focusing um, on pres you know minimizing losses but also accepting them and well you know once you do that then as I say the profits should look after themselves it's not guaranteed but um, that's the approach the mental approach that um, those have a sort of last of the distance tend to take that's also the importance of having a plan again I've, I've referred to sort of analyzing even if you are right whether it was right through you know, more through luck rather than anything else and if you know, a pre, you know reflecting that and dealing with it um, and not becoming overconfident just because you just had a, a sort of lucky streak and then put in risking more and then seeing it all all go wrong and that also comes down to the importance of trading psychology and why I've emphasized at the end and why I'm looking at it again on Thursday in a more um, detailed webinar because it's a, it's a, again it's an area where a lot of people come unstuck it's not a question of being right and wrong in terms of the market direction in terms of um, support and resistance levels or being able to predict the future it's 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 not under or dealing with that side of things again where um, a lot of people come unstuck in the early days and again making the final point that it's this risk and um, correct risk uh, risk and money management is the um, key pretty much to six, ensuring or making it more likely that you're going to um, have longevity and be a successful trader as I said this is you know a sort of basic feeder webinar we're doing more advanced webinars over the course of December but this is this one is really designed to sort of give you that um, confidence to sort of move on. As I said you can see previous webinars in, in two ways. I mentioned that we have, um, if you go to the front page you will see the webinars tab, um, you will see both upcoming webinars, but also some previous webinars are listed there as well. We're moving these as we do them to our YouTube page, which enables us to um, move away from what these are. These are these watch back over the software we're using now, but YouTube is obviously more accessible, so we're migrating these over there. And this one will be on YouTube tomorrow, so you can again just go on YouTube and go to my FX Pro Marketing channel, just search for FX Pro Marketing. You'll find a webinars playlist there. You also see a new help center that we've just recently um, revamped quite substantially. So if you click on the front page, go to help center, you'll find lots of resources here. The Trading Academy, which we're also building out as we speak, a, a glossary, um, videos. So you can all of these areas you can um, jump into the how to section, looking at um, optimization and more algo trading on there, and FAQ as well. So use this because there's a lot of answers to questions in here as well not um, some of its product related and, and platform related but also more general ones as well so use all these resources and um, give us any feedback um, you wish to do our next webinar is on Thursday at 1400 GMT um, 
you can watch you can sign up to register there just straight there you can also um, watch the previous ones there if you want to ask any questions you can do that through your software which as I mentioned at the beginning there's a Q&A panel at the top if you type a question there I will see it anonymously and will answer it verbally someone's asking how long would be good for me to use a demo account before I open a real one <clears throat> good question some people say um, as long as six months but it really depends on you and and you know so it, some people it will take less than six months um, it depends on you know how you you feel you're getting on a lot of people do move too early I mean think a lot of you know our data suggests that people tend to do well in the in the demo and then you know sort of their performance goes down when they go onto a real account um, so you know, don't jump in before you feel you're ready, and that's a place to make mistakes. Our demo accounts are very much aligned to the same trading conditions. Um, can't always be exactly the same, but pretty much the same as you'll get on the sort of live account. So it's a great um, place to um, test those, test your strategies, and, and and get a feel for trading before you jump. So yeah, anything up to six months, but that isn't. But it really depends on your level of experience and and um, you know how much time you put into learning over those six months, but again, as I stressed last week, you know trading is always about learning. So you know, you know, it's a question of confidence. I think ultimately it boils down to your confidence and um, how confident you feel and when you feel you're ready. Just one other question: What about the recommended leverage for a beginner? As I said, that really don't think of it so much as a recommended leverage, but think about what I spoke about at the beginning in terms of um, having the appropriate risk per trade. So, if you have a small, if you put a more small amount of risk capital aside, you need lower leverage because otherwise you you'll, you'll say goodbye to your trading capital in a very short space of time. If you have a higher amount of trading capital, um, you can apply more leverage. But it really boils down to the stuff I was saying at the beginning in terms of working out the pip value per trade, how much you're willing to risk, and what that is as a proportion of your trading capital. So don't think so much of you know what's the right leverage for, for a beginner. It's like think of it. Go back to what I talked about and watch this webinar again tomorrow when it's on the YouTube page and we'll put it out on our social media. It's a question of what what you're risking and leverage is linked to that. So um, there isn't a, cr a right or wrong answer to the amount of leverage, but um, putting it more is what you're you're risking per trade, which leverage is a key element of, as I explained. That's great. If there's no more questions, I will thank you for your time. Our next webinar is at the same time on Thursday. So, and as I said, I will put this up on our YouTube page tomorrow. See so if you want to go through any points, you can. Thank you very much.